Joining me now is Greg Fenton, CEO and Director of Zentech. And Greg, Zentech is a leader in nanotechnology, a name that's been around, a word that's been around for a few decades, and it is involved in many areas, as are you, including environmental sustainability. So let's start with HVAC, and in particular, ZenGuard. That's a product you've been developing. Tell me about that product first. Sure. Thanks, Pat. So ZenGuard is the trade name for an antimicrobial coating that Zentech developed, uh, was really born out of the pandemic and the need to come up with solutions to fight against uh, nasty pathogens such as SARS-CoV-2. We started developing that product in March of 2020 and by the fall of 2020, we had developed this antimicrobial coating that was 99.9% .9 effective against the SARS-CoV-2 virus as well as about 30 other pathogens that we tested it against. So our, our hypothesis was to create a coating that we could put onto personal protective equipment or HVAC filters that would reduce the exposure to viruses. So after uh, testing this for almost a year and a half in the HVAC market, we came up with, with some results that were nothing short of spectacular nothing that had ever been seen at this level of viral filtration efficiency uh, uh, for a passive system. And Zengar- As I understand it, you conducted a case study with the city of Toronto. How did that go? It went very well. And that really is the proof in the pudding, Pat. We announced the, those results last week where we modeled out the, the change from their current filters, assuming they were all MERV 13, which is just the rating associated with an HVAC filter, assuming they move to a MERV 9. That reduction in, in, that, in, in, in the, that filter usage resulted in an economic benefit of almost $40 million. And that was a result of reduced energy costs, reduced filter costs, reduced waste. Uh, so absolutely staggering value proposition with utilizing lower rated filters that can achieve a very high level of viral filtration efficiency. Okay, so it's one thing to build a better mousetrap, not to denigrate what your product is doing, but it's another thing to get the city of Toronto to move or any other entity. How do you anticipate uh, making that transition happen fast? So we are in the process of, of getting this approved by the regulator, Health Canada. The compound has already been approved for use in surgical masks. It's just another division of Health Canada, the Pesticide Management Regulatory Agency, that needs to approve the use of Zengard on HVAC filters. We have been out in the marketplace talking to potential customers about the utilization of Zengard on HVAC media. And based on the modeling that we've done and the value proposition uh, associated with it, this product is almost selling itself, Pat. When you can walk into uh, the, the city of Toronto and tell them you can save them $40 million a year simply by moving to a lower, lower rated filter with an antimicrobial coating on it, you're 99 percent of the way there. So our, our, uh, what we're focused on now is actually the scale up of the production of this material once we get approval based on the interest and demand that we're seeing for it. Are you going to sell direct to customer? We bet, uh, out of the gate, we will be because we've had to demonstrate this with customers. We've had to demonstrate it to the HVAC industry. The HVAC industry has never looked at uh, um, indoor air quality from a, uh, an aerosol perspective, and that's how the, the, the pathogens travel. So we had to go out and actually do this work with end customers. And now, so we have those customers ready to go. We will be entering into white labeling agreements where we will deliver those products directly through a, an HVAC manufacturer to the customer. But the long-term objective of our strategy, Pat, is to have the HVAC manufacturers, the HVAC filter manufacturers, utilize this through their distribution network. That's going to be the way that we'll uh, be able to attack a much lar larger swath of the market. Let's change the discussion a little bit to another application done by Triera Biosciences, and it deals with Aptimer uh, technology. Tell me what that is first, briefly. So aptamers are single-stranded DNA. 
And it's simply the best way to think about an aptamer is a synthetic monoclonal antibody or a synthetic antibody. We can create an aptamer that will bind to almost any target. If we have a profile, we can create, a, so if we have a, a protein and, and we, can, we can map out the profile of that protein, we can create an aptamer that will bind to it. And the importance of that is that's what your body does when you get sick. It creates an antibody that goes and binds to that antigen that's got, gotten into your system. We can do that with, with aptamers. And we've demonstrated that with the SARS-CoV-2 virus. We made some announcements last year where we demonstrated that the after, an aptamer we created for the SARS-CoV-2 virus showed complete neutralization against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. We've recently moved to adapt that to influenza. And we did that because we saw this major um, uh, pandemic in the making starting to develop in the US market where H5N1 is now starting to go through livestock and migrating into the human population. So this allowed us to demonstrate the flexibility of our platform and how quickly we could respond to a potential threat in the marketplace. Well, that does beg the question, how quickly can you get it to market? You, you probably have to get approvals, don't you? We do, Pat. Uh, to get it into the civilian population, you'll need to go through the traditional phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials. But given that this is a potential bio threat that could uh, impact the, the civilian population, the military, the food supply, there is interest from governments globally and military globally, including the US and Canada, to have this product expedited. The military doesn't have to go through the same testing regimen that, the, that, a, that a product would for the civilian population. So this can be expedited uh, very, very quickly if there's interest from military, which I can tell you there's substantial interest from the military in this, in this product. And finally, you've had some uh, recent changes at the executive level at Zentech. Uh, tell me about those and if they change the focus of the company. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, so Brian Boss, who was with us from the, the, the time of the, that we launched the proxy fight and took over the company, Brian was a director um, and he was uh, our, our first CFO. Uh, Brian left the company in November last year and we just recently announced he stepped down from the board and he's gone on to our advisory committee. As well, last week we announced, or the week before last, we announced that Francis Dubay, who was our first CEO and, and, and led the proxy fight to, to change the focus of the company from a mining company to an IP company, we announced he was stepping down from the role as COO. Um, this is really just a maturation of the company. The company has moved on to a stage now where we have the critical mass and now we need specialists in, spe in specific areas to move products ahead, like the Aptimer platform. We need biotech specialists now. So this is really just the natural evolution. Francis, uh, we started this process almost a year ago where Francis and I sat down and talked about the future and where we wanted the company to go. And he's an optometrist by training and has a very successful optometry practice in, in, uh, in Fort Erie. And he's moved back to, to running that practice full time. He's still a director of the company, but we're, we're really setting the stage for the next generation of specialists to come in and, and take uh, Zentech to the next level. We look forward to that next level, Greg. Thanks so much. Greg Fenton, CEO and director of Zentech. Thanks, Pat.